here. This, this to me is one of the coolest plants that you've ever brought to us. Uh, let's start with the idea of flowering cacti because there's hundreds of thousands of varieties of, of flowering cactus. Mm -hmm. How many of them are fragrant? Hardly one. In fact, only one in the realm of orchid cactus. This is it in yep. orchid cactus. This, this to me is the coolest plant. It's a cactus, but there's nothing prickly on it. There's nothing that'll bite you. The flowers are gorgeous. Mm -hmm. This thing can get three to five feet tall. Yeah. And I hate to put it this way, it's hard to kill. Oh yeah, so the thing about orchid cactus is they are already very rare in the world. They come mostly from the South Amazon jungle. Okay. Who's going there to find yeah, plants? Yeah, exactly, right? that's true. Now, out of the hundreds of thousands of varieties, like you mentioned, Dan, only one is fragrant. And when I mean fragrant, I, I truly mean like divinely uh -huh. honeysuckle. It's amazing. There's books written about these plants and pages and pages on the glories of what you're looking at in front of you. Now, what's special about this particular variety is it blooms in pure white flowers, which are huge, showy flowers. They last five months of a blooming season Beautiful. every year. But because it's in the cactus family, you hardly water it all, low maintenance, once a month. That's it. Yeah, and like you mentioned, no needles or pricklies. Look at those flowers. These are these soft cream, almost like white sea foam, and then you've got a light hue of yellow petals in the back there. This is something unique. People do not know. Who, these. Who's this good looking guy? This is some, I don't know, some uh, <laughs> You'd be ho nice. hobo we saw on the street. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe We paid him for that picture. <laughs> he, he is somewhat the matriarch now of the family. And, yeah. uh, and I've known your dad now for 25 years. Yeah, long time. Wow. Look so. at this. And if you think about it, Mother Nature doesn't paint in white very often. No, definitely not. Because white actually, for a flower, this is a house plant for most people. I want to make that really clear. Okay. When you have a white flower anywhere, it really shines. It adds a dimension of color that you don't normally get in the garden. But in the house, can you imagine having this growing as a centerpiece on a coffee table? It's anywhere it's, in the house. And I want to show everyone what makes it so special. Can, when you get it in the house. Can I do this? Yeah, you can Because certainly. I'll tell you what, th these are horticultural experts. They know exactly how to do all of this. This is a gift that will continue to give. You'll give some to your friends and your neighbors and your family. And, and all you do, does it matter where I go? Uh, anywhere. Watch this. Blindfolded. Uh, all you do is cut a leaf like that. That's it. There's no roots. Watch. Come over here. That will That's grow its own separate plant. And it happens quickly. Oh yeah, just in a matter of a few weeks, you're gonna have new leaves sprouting. You can do this unlimitedly. Actually, when, when you get these home out of the box, what you're gonna see are two plants, right. which were grown from the very method we just showed you, from our big plants that we have in our greenhouses. Because someone had to travel to the Amazon to get the originals. Yeah, and we started our collection with just a few leaf cuttings. We've grown them into thousands and thousands of plants, so the process works. You, the, uh, the challenge to find this plant at any garden center is one that, uh, it's like the, the search for the lost ark. You won't find them. And to find an orchid cactus that's fragrant, Mother Nature, out of the, again, hundreds of thousands of varieties, mm -hmm. Derek, one. Yep. There's one, and this is it. And to define this fragrance, there's a, a it's like sweet honeysuckle. Is there vanilla? a little hint of vanilla? Thank you. Yes, vanilla honeysuckle, but it's very powerful actually. People comment, at all, comment on it all the time, and I always like to remind them well, the amount of effort it takes me to grow this wonderful plant is right. the same amount of effort it takes me to grow this. That's a traditional little, orchid cactus. It's yeah. not going to get much bigger. Look at the difference people, people between the two. People know that's Christmas cactus too. You can see the size. I mean, one flower dwarfs the entire plant. Right. Same amount of effort involved for the gardener. Uh huh. Now, as a house plant, these are awesome because they never go dormant. What I mean is the leaves you'll be able to see year round. The flowers you get starting in late spring, they last 
For five months? I, the weird thing is, on mine, it, it almost gets a resurgence every once in a while. In, in the late autumn, it all of a sudden, poof, and I see flowers again totally, for a couple weeks. No, it, it definitely can happen like that, too. I, but as a general principle, it blooms during the summer okay. months, but it totally can bloom late autumn, too. Mine has done it several times, and it, it doesn't overpower you. It's not a, a house plant that becomes the house. It becomes a focal point. It's, it's summer in your home. Yep, and what's so unique about well, like what you see here, you know, you mentioned earlier, Dan, they can get three to five feet tall, but you control the size of the plant by the size of the pot. If you want it to stay small, you keep it in a tiny pot yes. and constantly cut back. You know, every time I cut a leaf off, not only am I making the plant smaller, it'll grow back from where I cut it, actually. It will, but now I can give a gift at the same time. So if you want to maintain a nicer, compact form, I, it's super easy. I find that to be the most amazing thing. In Mother Nature, that the lizard, when its tail falls off, it grows another tail. Yeah. That's what this plant is like. And you can bring a part of the tropical am 